Welcome to Chris Cast. This is episode number nine, Compline. This episode is about a mindfulness meditation practice and how important and difficult and intentional it is and how I interp- how I am interpreting it in my life and how I'm moving forward with spending time. I believe it's four or five, one, two, three, Four or five times a day. I, um, I've tried all different types of meditation methods and, um, quiet time, etc. Um, I just remember thinking back in the late nineties that I feel the most connected to the, Christian catechism to the Catholic catechism but because I believe that anybody be he man or she woman or um, they um, LGBTQ plus I think everybody deserves the ability to pursue a vocation if they feel like they've been touched or the grace or the Holy Spirit has touched them in a way that they want to pursue priesthood, I don't think gender should be an issue. So, uh, after, uh, after 29 years of Catholicism, most of which from 18 on was very passive, I converted intentionally by getting confirmed in the Episcopal Church. Primarily because I fell madly in love, platonically, but madly in love with Father Downing, the parishioner of St. James's Church on the Hill. He was very much a cult of personality with me, but one of the gifts I received by going so far into becoming a vestry member and a you know board member of the church and all those other things going on retreats going taking courses reading the bible all these things and taking my communion i never i was able to fool my mom or my mom wasn't a fool my mom let me but i felt like at the time that i fooled my mom into not making me go through communion uh sorry not go through confirmation while as a Catholic. I was baptized as a Catholic. I went to Catholic boys school from from 7th grade through 12th grade and uh, at 18 you know I never really went back to church except for weddings and funerals Um, or if someone else invited me but uh, at 29 I took the dog that, or maybe 28, I took the dog that my girlfriend at the time, Michelle, who is a cradle Episcopalian, as was her mother, to the dog park to get the animal, St. Francis Day Animal Blessing. And I found, I fell madly in love with this priest, this tall, bald, handsome man in a giant dress, a black, a black dress, uh, black garment um, and uh, convinced Michelle to go uh, she went with me every Sunday until she discovered St. Mark's and she went there, I went to St. James's and I stayed and the gift he gave me was falling in love with the um, prayers that Episcopalians do uh, four to five times a day they're just beautiful Um, I think I'm going to read you one tonight because I installed an application on my phone and it's very good. 
It is called Daily Prayer, and it's available for Android and probably iOS. So here's my late evening prayer. And I use this prayer. There's one at 7. There's one at 12. There's one at uh, 5 or 6. And then there's one at 8. So I think there's 4 or 5. 4. I'll let you know. You should check it out. But I will read this to you. And please take it as beautiful words, meditation, and the the chance of slowing my day down right after waking up at around noon in the uh, late afternoon, early evening, and then late at evening before going to bed. Um, the latest one that came out was half an hour ago at 9 p.m. on Saturday, June 29th. So I'll read that one to you now and let me know what you think. So I don't know the names of these different prayer times of day. I know that a lot of it's based on St. Benedict uh, and Benedictine monks. So they have eight prayer periods, and I think that we only sort of use some of them. I know that mat- matins, matins, matin, or vigils is the m- earliest morning one, like 7 a.m. Uh, there's a bunch of them here, lauds. Prime, prime, terce, terse, sext, known. I know Vespers and Compline. I think those are the night ones, the early evening and the late night ones. Um, I don't know. I know Compline is the one you read before going to bed. I am not going to care that much about it. Um, the uh, so before we go into the uh, to the reading, there's three or f- there's four parts. One is uh, from the Book of Common Prayer. One is, I believe, um, one is a reading from uh, from the Gospel or a Psalm. Uh, one is the Lord's Prayer. And the last one is a final closing prayer, I believe, from the Book of Common Prayer. So that is what you're going to experience in the next segment. I apologize if this is nothing remotely uh, calming to you now. But I hope you'll enjoy listening to me recite it to you. Um, Please take it as literature or poetry if you're not of the Christian faith, um, I'm not going to be proselytizing you or anything like that. I just, as I told someone recently, um, I have a choice of a lot of faiths if I want to pursue spirituality, but um, I've never cottoned to a, uh, a Hindu guru or never decided to follow a man in saffron robes. Um, um, I don't quite understand Islam very well. I was really compelled by Eastern Orthodox and Greek Orthodox when I dated a Greek girl. They really, they really got it. It's a very ancient church, very beautiful. And I have yet to become a member of the tribe, so I don't even have a strong experience or even a comfort in in, in the temple. So I know there's a lot of other denominations. The point is, is that I recognize uh, <clears throat> I recognize uh, the faithfulness of that belief system. I believe it's mystical, I believe it's magical, I believe it's transcendent. I believe it creates a beautiful energy. I believe it calms me and makes me happy and centers me and it makes me think outside myself and for others 
And I really hope the readings aren't violent or terrible. I hope they're beautiful. So, um, Lord, please make this a good reading so that my listeners can enjoy and not feel like I'm reading something that talks about smiting enemies or anything like that. Okay, I'm going to go to the next segment. Mahalo. I'm now going to read the late evening prayer for Saturday, June 29th, and I'm going to omit the reading part because both readings are very long, and it's much nicer without it this evening. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Most merciful God, I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what I have done and by what I have left undone. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbor, my neighbors as myself. I am truly sorry, and I humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me and forgive me, that I may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, creator of the changes of day and night, giving rest to the weary, renewing the strength of those who are spent, bestowing upon us occasions of song in the evening, as you have protected us in the day that is past, to be with us in the coming night. Keep us from every sin, every evil, and every fear, for you are our light and salvation and the strength of our life. To you be glory for endless ages. Amen. a good idea to stop the recording now because after this I'm going to include my first messed up reading of the prayers sort of a blooper reel because I read two really long scriptures and both of which strangely remind me of uh, current events if you read into them kind of reminds me of crazy Trump and um, and the uh kind of the the democratic debates and what's going on. I don't know how prescient those uh, are, but I thought I would include them. And the reason why I decided to re-record the um, um, the prayers is because I've been doing the Lord's Prayer since I was a little kid. And I just, instead of just reciting it from heart, I w- looked at the words and got the... Um, got the uh, lines all messed up so I actually kind of messed up and so it'll be a blooper but I think uh, you'll be highly amused by the um, by the readings they're super long and I don't know I don't do a good job of them but they're pretty funny so if you're going to bed and you're just relaxing you want to stop here and ignore the rest but if you're in your car and you kind of want to hear me 
struggle and fart around and hear some really weird... Remember how earlier I mentioned that I didn't want there to be any violent readings? Both of them were completely violent and terrifying and awful, which is why I cut them out uh, in the last segment. Anyway, mahalo. Thank you for listening. I'm Chris Abraham. This is Chris Cast. You can reach me at chrisabraham.com or abraham.su. Can email me at chris at abraham.su. You can text me at plus one two oh two three five two five zero five one. And you can find this podcast at anchor.fm slash Chris Abraham. Um, I'm Chris Abraham on Twitter and Facebook, and I'm Chris Abraham on LinkedIn and YouTube, and so please reach me there. I'm also Chris Abraham on Instagram. And I'll talk to you soon. Talk to you next time. Following is a real blooper reel, so please adapt accordingly. They call this the late evening prayer for Saturday, June 29, but I will call it Compline. Opening prayer. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Confession Most merciful God, I confess that I have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what I have done and and by what I have left undone. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved my neighbors as myself. I am truly sorry, and I humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on me and forgive me that I may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Scripture reading. This is a reading from Daniel 8. Daniel's vision of the ram and the goat. In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared to me, Daniel, after that which appeared to me at the first. And I saw in the vision, and when I saw I was in Susa, the citadel, which is in the province of Elam. And I saw in the vision, and I was at the Ulai Canal. I raised my my eyes and saw, and behold, a ram standing on the bank of the canal. It had two horns, and both horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher one came up last. I saw the ram charging westward, and northward, and southward. No beast could stand before him, and there was no one who could rescue from his power. He did as he pleased and became great. As I was considering, behold, a male goat came from the west across the face of the whole earth without touching the ground, and the goat had conspicuous horn, had a conspicuous horn between his eyes. He came to the ram with the two horns which I had seen standing on the bank of the canal, and he ran at him with his powerful wrath. I saw him come close to the ram, And he was enraged against him, and struck the ram, and broke his two horns. And the ram had no power to stand before him, but he cast him down to the ground and trampled on him. And there was no one who could rescue the ram from his power. Then the goat became exceedingly great. But when he was strong, the great horn was broken, and instead of it there came up four conspicuous horns toward the four winds of heaven. 
Out of one of them came a little horn, which grew exceedingly great towards the south, towards the east, and toward the glorious land. It grew great even to the host of heavens, and some of the host and some of the stars it threw down to the ground and trampled on them. It became great, even as great as the prince of the host, and the regular burnt offering was taken away from him, and the place of his sanctuary was overthrown, and a host was given over to it together with the regular burnt offering because of transgression. And it will throw truth to the ground, and it will act and prosper. Then I heard a holy one speaking, and another holy one said to the one who spoke, For how long is the vision concerning the regular burnt offering, the transgression that makes desolate, and the giving over of the sanctuary and host of the trampled underfoot, to be trampled underfoot? And he said to me, For twenty-three hundred evenings and mornings, then the sanctuary shall be restored to its rightful state. The Interpretation of the Vision When I, Daniel, had seen the vision, I sought to understand it, and behold, there stood before me one having the appearance of a man. And I heard a man's voice between the banks of the Ulai, and it called, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. So he came near where I stood, and when he came I was frightened and fell on my face. But he said to me, Understand, O son of man, that the vision is for the time of the end. And when he had spoken to me, I fell into a deep sleep with my face to the ground. But he touched me and made me stand up. He said, Behold, I will make known to you what shall be at the latter end of the indignation, and for it refers to the appointed time of the end. As for the ram that you saw with the two horns, these are the kings of Media, or Medea and Persia, and the goat is the king of Greece, and the great horn between his eyes, the first king. As for the horns, the horn that was broken, in place of which four others arose, four kingdoms shall arise from his nation but not with his power, and at the latter end of their kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their limit, a king of bold face, one who understands riddles shall arise. His power shall be great, but not by his own power, and he shall call, cause fearful destruction, and shall succeed in what he does, and destroy mighty men and the people who are the saints." By his cunning he shall make deceit prosper under his hand, and his own mind he shall become great. Without warning he shall destroy many, and he shall rise up against the prince of princes, and he shall be broken, but by no human hand. The vision of the evening and the morning that has been told is true, but seal up the vision, for it refers to many days from now. And I, Daniel, was overcome and lay sick for some days, Then I rose and went about the king's business, but I was appalled by the vision and did not understand it. I'm going to try the other one, 2 Corinthians 8. Engagement to give generously. 2 Corinthians 8. We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the church of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means of their own accord, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And this, not as we expected, but they have, they gave themselves first to the Lord, and then by the will of God to us. Accordingly, we urge Titus that he had started, so he should complete among you this act of grace. But as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in all earnestness, and in our love for you, see that you excel in this act of grace also. I say this not as a command, but to prove by the earnestness of others that your love also is genuine. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that through, though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, 
so that you by his poverty might become rich. And in this matter, I give my judgment. This benefits you who a year ago not only to, this, to do this work, but also to deserve to do it. So now finish doing it as well, so that your readiness and desiring it may be matched by your completing it out of what you have. For if the readiness is there, it is acceptable, according to what a person is not, according to what he does not have. For I do not mean that others should be eased and you burdened, but that as a matter of fairness, your abundance at the present time should supply their need, so that their abundance may supply your need, that there may be fairness. As it is written, whoever gathered much has no, had nothing left over, and whoever gathered little had no lack. Commendation of Titus. But thanks to God, who put into the heart of Titus the same earnest care that I have for you, for he not only accepted our appeal, but being himself very earnest, he is going to do of his own accord. Within him, within him, with him we are sending the brother who is famous among all the churches for his preaching of the gospel. And not only that, but he has been appointed by the churches to travel with us as we carry out this act of grace that he is being ministered by us that is being ministered by us for the glory of the Lord himself and to show our goodwill. We take this course so that no one should blame us about the generous gift that is being administered by us. For we aim at what is honorable, not in the Lord's sight, but also in the sight of man. And with them, we are sending our brother whom we have often tested and found earnest in many matters, but who is now more earnest than ever because of his great confidence in you. As for Titus, he is my partner and fellow worker for your benefit. And as for our brothers, they are messengers. As the church, the glory of Christ, so give proof before the churches of your love and of our boasting about you to these men. Now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us our trespasses. Oof. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now the closing prayer. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, creator of the changes of day and night, giving rest to the weary, renewing the strength of those who are spent, bestowing upon us occasions of song in the evening. As you have protected us in the day that is past, so be with us in the coming night. Keep us from every sin, every evil, and every fear, for you are our light and salvation and the strength of our life. To you be glory for endless ages. Amen. Thank you.